The man who sold a fake airport for $242 million, the biggest frauds in history. The man who sold a fake airport to an international bank in one of the biggest frauds in history. There have been frauds in history, but selling an airport to an international client without physical sight seeing for verification and legitimacy of the deal is rather bizarre. Emmanuel Inwood Ogdenigui, famously known as Owell of Abagana, pulled one of the greatest frauds in banking history. His scam is the third largest in banking history in the world. Mood is regarded as one of the smartest criminals in history. The banking frauds that are a step ahead of Mood's stunt of a looting of the Iraqi Central Bank by Kusei Gusen and Nick Leeson's trading losses at Barings Bank. Before his involvement in the infamous scam, Mood was involved in legitimate business ventures in Nigeria, including real estate and car sales, Yamud and his co-conspirators convinced a Brazilian bank that he was a government official and that Nigeria was planning to build an airport in the country. They used forged documents and manipulated communications to make the scam appear legitimate. The scam took place over several years, with Mood and his accomplices meticulously planning and executing their deception. Emmanuel Mood's top-notch fraud of $242 million Nelson Sakaguchi, the director of Brazil's Banco Noroeste, based in Sao Paulo, was the victim of Inwood's gimmicks. To perpetuate this huge crime, Inwood needed to appear in the robe of an influential Nigerian. The easiest personality he could wear at that time was that of Paul Owuma, then governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. This personality was easy for Inwood to wear because he was the director of Union Bank of Nigeria then. So mirroring the personality of any banker will come in a handful for Inwood. Aside from wearing Paul or Wurmer's personality, Mood needed other accomplices to facilitate the fraud. So he employed the expertise of Emmanuel Ofulu, Inzaraib Okuli, and Obum Osakwi, along with the husband and wife duo, Christian Aichuku Anajemba and Amaka Anajemba, for the smooth execution of the operation. Appearing in the figure of Paul or Wurmer, Mood convinced Sakaguchi to invest in a new airport in the nation's capital, Abuja, in exchange for a $10 million commission. The total deal was a $242 million deal with $191 million in cash and the remainder in the form of outstanding interest between 1995 and 1998. Sakaguchi fell for the bait, costing Banco Norest a huge loss. How was Mood's fraud exposed? The fraud was uncovered after a December 1997 joint board meeting, in which an official from Santander inquired about why a large sum of money, two-fifths of Norest's total value and half of the capital, was sitting in the Cayman Islands unmonitored. This led to criminal investigations in Brazil, Britain, Nigeria, Switzerland, and the United States. To guarantee the sale to Santander, the Simonson and Cochrane families, the owners of Banco Norest, paid the $242 million bill themselves. However, Banco Norest collapsed in 2001. In 1997, Banco Santander, a Spanish multinational financial services company, moved to take over Banco Norest Brazil. While at a joint meeting to facilitate the takeover, a large vacuum was uncovered. The vacuum looks so massive that it was given a proper look. It was uncovered that a huge sum of funds was lying fallow in the Cayman Islands untouched. This fund is about two-fifths of the bank's total value and half of its capital. This led to the setup of a criminal investigation team in the countries where the individuals involved are residents. The countries are Brazil, Britain, Nigeria, Switzerland, and the United States. The newly constituted Antigraft Agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, hunted in mood in Nigeria. Nelson Sakaguchi was arrested at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport and offloaded to and dispatched to Switzerland to stand trial on charges relating to setting up bank accounts there as part of the fraud. But to buffer the situation as damage control, the Simonson and Cochrane families, who own the Banco Norest, paid the $242 million. One would think that this should be enough to save the situation, but the bank collapsed in 2001. In Wood's trial, in 2004, Inwood and his accomplices were arrested by the EFCC and charged 86 counts ranging from bribery and fraudulently seeking advance fees at the Abuja High Court. They'd all pleaded not guilty to the charges. However, the judge, Lowell Gumi, alleged that there was an attempt to bribe court staff. Years later, the case was thrown out by Gumi, 
who stated that the crime wasn't committed in Abuja as the offense was committed in Lagos, miles away from his jurisdiction. Yuwood and his cohorts were arrested outside the courthouse and taken to Lagos. This case was one of the major cases of the ESC after it was constituted. The then chairman of the agency, Nuju Rabadu, alleged that Ninwu tried to bribe him with $75,000 cash. This further made the case complicated for Nwu as charges of attempted bribery and the attempted kidnapping of a prosecution witness added to his existing case. One of Nwu's cohort, Amaka Anajemba, admitted to the crime and was sent to two and a half years in prison and ordered to repay $25.5 million. In 2005, Nwu was arrested by Nigerian authorities for his involvement in the scam. Later, Emmanuel and one of his accomplices, Enzirai Okoli, pleaded guilty to the offense after testimony from Sakaguchi. He was then collectively sentenced to 29 years in prison, with Nwu receiving five concurrent sentences of five years, totaling 25 and Okole receiving four. This was accompanied by the confiscation of all of Nwu's assets. It was returned to the victim. Mood was released in 2006. Mood's sentence was one of the longest ever handed down for a financial crime in Nigeria. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison. In 2006, Inwu filed a lawsuit to recover his assets after he was released from prison, stating that some of the assets were acquired before he committed the offense. He was, however, able to recover $52 million of it. In a court hearing of the case in 2021, Imwood reportedly stated that he didn't know about the $242 million airport scam. He said he was convinced by his legal team, led by Dr. Chris Ish San when he was in prison, to make a pea bargain agreement with the ESCT. In his words, Imwood said, I told him that I'm not responsible for the $242 million, that I'm not responsible for this money, I don't know anything about it. The EFC he should check all the remittances that came through my accounts, Though I have my friend, the late Christian Anajemba's various bank accounts. As money came to my accounts, I gave it to one of my Indian friends, Mr. Narish Asnani, who has contact with a Swiss bank, who in turn does the exchange for me. When the money comes in, Asnani will take his commission, and I'll take my commission, and I give the large sum to Christian Anajemba. The Inwood case has been widely cited as a cautionary tale about the dangers of falling for advance fee fraud and similar scams. It highlights the importance of scepticism and due diligence, even when dealing with seemingly legitimate offers. The Inwood scam further tarnished Nigeria's reputation in the international community for financial scams and fraudulent schemes, contributing to the negative perception associated with Nigerian print scams. Before you leave, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for future interesting videos like this. Thanks for watching.